infrastructure by providing tools, resources, utilities for the different project areas and subgroups to increase communication and participation across the project, which is kind of a mouthful. But we have nine different primary methods that we use to kind of, uh, the nine different methods to the madness. So these are all the different areas that we help contribute towards. Messaging is regarding specific marketing initiatives and outreach that coordinate across subgroups. Um, some examples of this was the recent Python, um, Fedora Loves Python uh, marketing campaign, which was a cross subgroup collaboration between design, marketing, and com ops. Um, Who came up with that idea? We, we helped, when the idea was coming forth, we helped um, with the marketing side of it. But who came originally out with the idea? It was in Commerce with the marketing team. Uh, and then the storytelling is dealing with communicating the story of contributors for contributors, particularly with the community blog is the best example of that. Um, badges, we help handle with the strategic planning and administration of Fedora badges. Um, an example of that is going to be the onboarding series, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, Fedora Hubs, which is the event will help with the eventual administration and tending to Fedora Hubs, and that's definitely going to be a large area of impact going forward for bringing in new contributors and helping retain them, and tying all the different parts and fields of Fedora together. Um, for the wiki, we also help garden the wiki and take requests from other teams. And yeah. so currently, like. I am building a tool to identify the redundant pages in wiki. So most of the pages in wiki have like same information in across different pages. So I'm trying to build a tool to identify those pages using some sort of metrics. Let's see. And then um, we also work on metrics, which is the next topic. So we try to generate metrics to understand the community. So till now, like uh, I've worked on some metrics to understand the impact of attending like Fedora events on the activity of contributors and I have also generated some metrics regarding like uh, women in Fedora and outreachy and other GSOC intern statistics. Yeah, so uh, there's another team member like Sachin Kamath is working on the intern stats tool. So and then there was a year in review report for different kind of teams. So we worked on metrics for that. So yeah, so we basically generate metrics to understand the community. Then there's elections. So we also help the Fedora release manager with, uh, for monitoring the elections, like basically with all sort of stuff, like posting it across channels, wiki, and whatever help he needs. And then there's some other miscellaneous stuff, which just doesn't fit into any. And an example for that one was recently there was an issue between communication about uh, the design team had some frustrations about getting design resources and the ambassadors had frustrations about getting design resources. So there was a bit of a communication breakdown for that. And we helped, um, we are looking at trying to find ways to improve communication about that and we helped write the guide that will hopefully eventually be used in other ways too for a long term vision uh, to help make it easier for ambassadors getting assets for things like banners, resources and uh, different art assets that we need in the field. Oh, and then also the culture side of it as well. We help with the diversity team with um, uh, the work that they're doing over there. One of the recent events was the Fedora Women's Day. Uh, that was one of the events that happened just actually earlier in July. Um, and we helped with the planning, the reporting and assisting with that. And so there is a, a few, back in June, there was a full council report meeting with uh, the, the full com ops report. And that's all on YouTube, but since that's about how long the panel would be, it's like, uh, it's like a 50 minute video. We will watch it right now. But you can check it out. Yeah, and the link will be available. I'll make sure to share that. So why are we here? So the two things that we really would like to talk about the most is looking at onboarding for new areas of contributing in Fedora. Um, looking at the different areas that people find success in as well as the areas that people aren't finding success in and ways that we can improve that. Um, sharing some of those frustrations and then uh, finding ways that we can support each other with bringing in new members and keeping them in the project as well. Um, and we also like to do a little bit of planning for the future regarding elections, as well as getting an idea for future tasks to incorporate into a future com ops work or a fad or a virtual fad too, and to help kind of create the 
a vision for the future as well. And we'll also have an open floor for anyone to bring ideas to us as well. So for the onboarding process, we like uh, some of the work that we've been doing is helping create guidelines and directions for newcomers to get involved in different parts of Fedora. And the objective of doing that is to prevent it from being too overwhelming and confusing, as well as unclear about how to move forward for new contributors. Some of the work that we have been doing already is with the, we started with our own team. We've also been assisting with the modularity working group, and we're working with infrastructure now to identify clear point steps to bring those new contributors in, as well as to help make it easier for them to get started. Um, so we also, we're, we're working through that with helping subproject identifying steps to becoming involved, converting those steps into, uh, with resources like badges, uh, newcomers can pick up, and it makes it easier for subprojects to gain new contributors and also to keep them. Um, can we follow up on that example a bit? Like yeah. How this, this happened in practice? Who have, who of the infrastructure team have you been talking to, how the coordination happened, and so on? Can we talk about So for that, um, with infrastructure, they have their process lined out. Um, for like the steps that they have for contributing, uh, getting started with infrastructure, it's all there's a, Patrick gave a talk on it last year. Um, uh, and so we're looking at their steps, and we identified a few series of badges that particularly deal with kind of a general area of contributing. So there was one called, uh, it looks at mailing list activity, another looks at uh, git commits in Pajur, um, and those would fit into a kind of a step-by-step -step process for infrastructure. Um, and, um, so we, I think we originally reached out to Patrick, who provided us with some resources for uh, from like last year's flock about the getting started with infrastructure at the state state of infra talk last year, um, and so those are some of the resources that we're working with to identify those steps. Um, can, can a certain group in Fedora, let's say my particular thing is a Python special interest group, yeah. approach you and get help? Yes. Yeah, so because we have actually trouble in this area. With this group. So is it okay for each directly? Yeah, that's team? actually what we want. Yeah, I know. So what's the best way? Write to the mailing list or a mailing list or a, or a ticket is the best way for it to get on our agenda. Um, so like I'll show in a minute. We actually have uh, so part of what we've done before. Oh, this is a, so this was an example for the the com ops onboarding steps um, for a context of what we're like the numbered order of events to become a member of the team. Um, um, and the example I wanted to pull up here was some of the work that we've already been... Can you go one yeah. step? Like, I'm, sure. I'm really surprised about the e how easy it is to join the infrastructure team that basically looks like a self-service. There's no dispensary. Yeah, the the no, 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 no. Ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. But it's by design to be easy to join. Not in Yes. Well, that's the thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And so the thing I'd like to show is that there's a um, some of the discussion and the plan we've been doing on this. Um, so in this case we have I can drag the window over. Um, I might just make this mirror display, this is a little bit confusing. Um, Yeah. So we have this ticket here, which is kind of our master tracking ticket for all the different sub-projects and the tickets that are on our agenda right now. Um, and so in this case, we have the ComOps one, which we worked through first, followed by the modularity working group, and then the infrastructure team, which is in, also in progress. Uh, and so you can kind of see that, I think we documented it in, uh, really in this one. Um, So we've been working with the teams to identify those steps. Like the, when the modularity working group came to us, they were trying to get started because they're relatively new. Um, so they were trying to get more people involved from current contributors to new contributors. 
Um, and uh, so when they reached out to us, we worked with them to identify the preliminary steps that people do to get involved with their with the working group. Um, and we helped work through getting them like a like a badge for when someone's sponsored into their fast group. Um, and so by doing that and then publishing where they have their steps online, um, on the, they're on the wiki right now, but long term they're probably going to be moved somewhere else with Fedora Hubs, which I'll get to in a little bit. Um, but now they have clearly defined uh, steps for the modularity, getting involved with the modularity working group that are relatively easy to find. Um, So that's some of the work that we have been doing in progress and some of the things that we've been doing for infrastructure are more general to the entire project for enhancing the process overall. Like the, uh, this one was for, uh, this one was for being added, added to a contributor, which I think, this was by being added to repositories, I think. No, that's, that's the commits, commits one. Commits yeah. one actually pushes, but yeah, you push commits. Yeah. And then hot topic is one for mailing lists, and then license to push. I think that, that was the one for being added to a pusher repo. And so the point of these is that they're not applicable just to one project because more than one team uses like more than just infrastructure uses pusher. Almost every project sub team or subgroup uses mailing lists. So all of these can be applied to any team, and this also helps take a little bit of the work off the badges team because they already have hundreds, close to hundreds of tickets that are open or in progress. So if we can target like the kind of badges that we're doing to be non-specific to a, a specific or to like a one working group or one team, um, it makes it easier to apply. Like for these ones, they'll be applicable to almost anyone in the project. Um, so for mailing lists, that's definitely an obvious one, and for Bajure, any development-oriented groups that could have an impact. Um, and so they fit into the greater idea of making it easier for people to get involved and to figure out the different areas that they can get started with. Um, and so the things that we wanted to do was having a team-specific onboarding process discussion. Um, we wanted to look at who was um, the teams that don't have an onboarding process. And if you do have it, what is it and where is it? How publicly visible is it? Um, any steps specific to your team that we could help you out and look into for bringing new people into your team or, pro or subgroup or SIG or working group? Um, as well as feedback on the existing process, like what's working now and what isn't. Um, does your team have many interested newcomers or is retainment more of the problem with keeping people there after they introduce themselves and they get involved a little bit and then they drop off? Um, as well as any future suggestions for onboarding as well. So I know with the Python work, uh, Python SIG, that was one that had, um, I was trying to understand a little bit. So you guys have like an onboarding process at all? Or is it like, I'm just trying to understand, I haven't looked into it too it's much yet. It's very, very undefined. You try to So you basically it said if you want introduce yourself on the Python level mailing list and ask for being added, but it's a slash six slash Python. Gotcha. So nowadays we changed it a little bit. So yeah, go a little down. That's the Python sick fast group, basically. Okay, cool. I guess. So when someone's first getting involved with the SIG, what do they, so they do an introduction on the mailing list to let people know and then? Yeah, that's the stuff that we don't know. Okay. The problem was that the, there is Python sick mailing list, which is Python Devel. Right. But then a fast group originated the Python 6 fast group, and you can uh, give commentators rights for packages to that group. Mm -hmm. So it also has a kind of mailing list that receives all the Bugzilla and commits and stuff like that. Right. And people who are in the fast group receive those emails through this list. 
but because of some security issues, like CVE is being posted there, uh, it has been decided that the list is going to be private. And all that I just said was written on the wiki, and everybody was like, let me enter this secret mailing list. I want to know your secret discussions. But there was no discussion happening. It was basically just like to collect this automatic emails, but we couldn't communicate it. So now on the wiki, there is no mention of the mailing list at all. Right. And we don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. And now it says if you make in at least five Python packages and you want to be part of Python 6 fast group, uh, you can talk to a sponsor and he decides whether you stay or, or go in on the not. list. Yeah. Okay. But I'm not sure, and we are not sure if this is the right way to do it or not. It's still work in progress. Gotcha. I, I will talk more about it on my workshop about Python next month. So Perfect. Okay. So I think in this case, Having like numbered steps would definitely be one of the places you could probably we could probably start with. Um, so looking at, let me pull up. I think there's probably a better way to do this with the, the monitors, but um, uh, I'm trying to find the window. Um, So probably one thing we could do is by having, and uh, one thing we could do right now to help this would be to have uh, like creating like a, its own, we could have it on its own wiki page for now, of like a number of steps for getting involved in the Python SIG. And from there, um, we uh, eventually like the, 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 kind of the whole point of having these like numbered steps right now is that in the future with Fedora Hubs, it's Fedora Hubs, have you, are, you, are you familiar with what's going on? Yeah, cool. Um, so when Fedora Hubs comes along, it's going to be tying in all these different areas of the project together. And there's going to be different modules that are identified for, or that already have been or are in progress of being identified for all the different teams' needs. Um, like there's going to be, there's some specific ones, like there's like a wiki tree one. There's also like yesterday there was a talk about the IRC chat one. Um, and so when it comes time to like looking at a specific team or a SIG or a working group, it's helpful to the Hubs team if they, it's like an, an easy to understand way for the, other people to get involved. So short term, like a wiki page is kind of the idea, but long term, the strategic idea is more towards Fedora hubs and making tying in those things, like the, the steps for getting involved with things like badges would tie in really easily to hubs. Um, uh, and so the ultimate goal of which is being with, I mean, and that's kind of thing with hubs in general too, is that it's supposed to make it, uh, the, the work that we're doing in Fedora much more visible. And so having like the onboarding process and hubs and defining it now for being created in hubs later on is something that will make it easier to um, bring those people in long term. But for, for the time being, a wiki page is what we've been doing for creating the join steps. So I think if we could like, I have an either pad that I just spun up and we could try to. Like, 
Why are you so secret? Are you even open source project? You are so secretive and stuff like that. And we had problems with communicate, communicating this to your actual Python fans and whatever. Gotcha. So we decided we will hide the information from Wiki and we will not mention the mailing list at all. We will only mention the fast group. And not everybody just they wanted maybe they would want to join the fast group for the badge. Right. But you go to the badge? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you maintain at least five Python packages, find a sponsor and talk to him. I'm sponsored by the way, so Sorry? Just random Python, not Python modules, but anything that is Python? Python modules, packages of Python modules. Like, yeah, but also like some high GTK graphical application or something, does that count? Yes, but it doesn't say if you have five, you will end up with being in a group. It says if you have at least five. I don't want to be in the group, I just want to crash. I understand, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> So currently it says if you are interested and if you have at least five lectures, that's just the like low barrier so that everybody who just wants that in their CV contacts us, I want to be a member of five to six. And then the, the person actually has to talk to a sponsor and explain why he wants to join and if he says I want a badge. I don't think that's a valid reason. I mean, creating the badge for a group you are already in is the only way to get the badges. <laughs> and so for the purpose of the badge, it'd be more about kind of exposing the Python SIG as a whole? Because when people flip through like the badges index and they see the Python SIG or another... Honestly, the purpose of the badge was so I can get another badge. <laughs> I don't think more long term than that, so, so I don't know. Yeah, I've seen other, other groups have badges. Mm -hmm. So like uh, KDE say have a badge, XFC uh, has a badge, so I thought it's easy to create the graphics, I will just re replace the logo with Python logo and I will create a Python say badge. Right. So you and got another badge for making a badge, right? Of course, and designing and proposing and yeah, <laughs> it's kind of like, it grows exponentially if you try. So I think what would be helpful right now for this one is if we do like a, this walk through each so if you were a new person coming into the Python SIG, or if you were looking at someone getting involved, what would be the steps you'd want them to follow with as we, we're getting through? We would definitely uh, want to know why they want to join. And we would like to communicate with them that this is not some like only, you can still be a member of the SIG if you just add your name to the wiki. Right. That's the first thing. Okay. So if you just want to be a member of the SIG, join the mailing list, join the IRC channel, add your name to the wiki if you want, or if you don't want, you don't have to be that you just like an informal member, and if you want to be the member of the fast group, uh, then you have to explain why. And it's kind of like a proven packager yes. for Python packages, but only for those packages where the maintainers decided they will like give the rights to the safe. It's not automatically happening. Right. So it's not so strong as proven packager, but it's not so easy as being part of the, I don't know, Something else. Some other if, if, yeah. if you invite people to the group, you, you are giving them privileges. In matter like they, they can push to other people packages. Packages. So I think they at least had to be sponsored packages. That's the first requirement. Got it. And we, we kind of decided to put them like have at least five five packages, so we can look at them and see how you maintain them and if you are proactive and stuff like that. But we even have a set of rules that says follow these ten steps. And at the end, you will be definitely the part of, this, of the fast group and you will get the back. Right. Okay. So then I guess the first thing that would that fit it into, you'd want to have an introduction on a mailing list. Introduction on a mailing list, uh, joining the IRC channel. Yeah. And you don't apply to fast directly by clicking a button. You contact the sponsor and ask the sponsor uh, to be added uh, to the fast group. To the fast group, and the sponsor decides by whatever means that he, he will add you or not. Do you have any kind? Ambassador Sorry. Ambassador school. Ambassadors have mentors. Yeah. They are some rules. 
this, there are no rules, rules for spinal saying because this is a new, new approach. There were even less rules before, and so we're trying to formalize it a little bit, but we don't want to be too, like, biochemical or what is the mm -hmm. uh, Bureaucrats or? Bureaucracy. Bureaucracy. Yeah. And we don't want to, like, make it too complex. Nice. Like, fill this form mm -hmm. and then open the ticket and then, <laughs> uh, yeah, stuff like that. We want to be cozy and informal, but we still want to make, so it doesn't, so, for example, nobody would say, how come you are on the sick and I am not? I contribute to Python and Fedora more, this is unfair, and stuff like that. And right. So we don't want this to happen. It never happened, but yeah. So it would probably be helpful. I mean, are the things that, like, what would you say are like, so when you're sponsoring someone to the SIG, what would you say are things that you're looking for, like key like check marks that you're looking for for their activity or for their what they're doing in Fedora with Python packages? If they are active packagers, if they didn't start packaging yesterday, uh, if they maintain a lot of Python packages, if they do packaging reviews. So do you have like, uh, if, what do you mean by they didn't start yesterday? So like they have been a package for at least like six months maybe? No, that there is no hard line. This okay. is just what I have in my head. Like I, I need to check if the person has any experience with Python packaging, and uh, if like, for example, if I don't never, I don't know who he is or she, and I never met the person, then I can look to the data and see oh, if, if he or she has been Python packager in Fedora for years. Uh, this is obvious. I will take the person, but uh, if on the other hand I meet the person like face to face, yeah, the person could have started today, but if you convince me that this is the right person for you, I will edit. Right. So you, I still want to give the sponsors a little room to like use their own uh, judgment, but I don't want to be unfair, so that nobody can say this is uh. an unfair and non-transparent process. But uh, what if a person wants to be a Python packager for the first time? Do they want that you or yeah, if, they, if they want to be a Python packager for the first time, then there are two situations. First, they start being packagers at all. And they are interested in Python, and they will package Python stuff. But nothing then, related to the Python stuff. No, it's just, so they have yeah. But they, they could possibly seek packaging sponsors in the Python 6 group because it will make more sense. They will end up with me again, I guess, and maybe there are others, but I'm not sure. Uh, or, or there is a packager who packages stuff for years, but never packaged anything in Python and wants help. Again, the person can reach Python 6 or the IRC channel, for example. Like, hey guys, how, how do I do this? I want to make it Python 2 and Python 3 compatible. Where do I look? The guidelines are messy. And we will give the person an advice. But uh, in that case, we won't add it to the fast group immediately. But after we decide, yeah, you, you know your business here, then you can, right. yeah. Okay. You think they're, again, I guess there's different scales of like the type of packages somebody would maintaining. Like you'd have a simple, it's like putting like a number, like the minimum number of packages or having like a number on it, it's not really applicable because you have, you know, people might have like 15 packages, but they're these really small, like maybe libraries and you might have someone that has like three, but they're these like huge projects. So yeah, of course. Okay. So you, for proven packages, I believe, it says you have to download the previews high quality reviews, and there is an actually voting process. So you apply to be a sponsor, uh, not group packager and sponsors, it's different. Uh, it's different a little bit, but they, uh, sorry, this is, yeah, sponsors, I said group packager. And other sponsors, then they vote uh, in the matter like, in, in time frame of the week, you need to collect at, the, at least three pluses, and at the end of the week, you have you need more pluses than, than minuses, and then you, then you became, become sponsored. But this is possible because we have a lot of sponsors. But in 
Python 6 is like the fast group has 20 members and four sponsors. So I don't think any vote there is making any sense. So okay. It's just a rough estimate. I don't remember it exactly. Yeah. yeah. It can, can be 15, it can be 30. But yeah, roughly 20 is probably. Okay, cool. And so you definitely want them to have some kind of background with packaging in Python, of course. Um, so you'd probably want to have that somewhere, having that info maybe on their user page on the wiki or in the introduction too. I, what would make it easier for you to like be able to tell if someone or like when you're reviewing someone to get into the SIG, like what things would? Um, I would definitely it helps for me if they actually tell why they want to join and why they think they should be there in their own words, and they can they can obviously lie. You know, you want the badge, so you think up something. Just yeah, I was thinking that's the right way to do it. Yeah, uh, so you will lie about your Python experience, but then I can like smell this and, and see if you actually have some Python. But you still give them the badge, right? Yeah, <laughs> you can. They can. Do, you can do another badge. You tried to join the <laughs> fail, and then everybody would just try because there's one badge, either the bad one or the good one. <laughs> so you want the background of why they want to join? As well and as what is their experience with the final backing in their own words? Not Python in general. This is mostly about Python packaging. They're, they might be excellent Python developers, but, not but packagers. zero experience in packaging. Okay, I don't want to hijack this workshop, so if there are other things you want to talk about. No, having the Python sig down. Python sig for two hours, that makes right. some sense. We can, we can continue this uh, on the having, next slot. Yeah, I think so this is... We could probably open a ticket for this. Yeah, I think now that like, having this info and knowing about that definitely helps. Um, yeah, knowing I, about things yeah. for ourselves. <laughs> yeah, okay. so I think that this is something that we can definitely help with and actually, um, I kind of have some ideas that we could try to do to bring. Because I, 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 I think I'm on the develop list. I think I've seen some yeah, of. Yeah, you are there. Yeah. Because you posted when they when this this stuff was created. Yeah, so yeah. When you open up the ticket, you you send an email to Python develop list. That's how I knew about it. Gotcha. Unfortunately, not of, not many Python sick members are actually participating in the discussion, mm -hmm. except for me. I guess. <laughs> so yeah. The, just a little bit sad, but yeah, I know you posted it there, so it's not your fault, but like of interest, wait, wait. So we had originally planned like one hour for the onboarding series, and then one hour for the pad ideas and open flow. So we still have like 15 minutes for discussing about onboarding, so. And I think... I'd be interested to see what else people wanted to bring up too, because I know we have some people who are, I mean, I can see a number of you who are involved with ambassadors, um, as well as marketing too. That's one that I was kind of interested in as well. Because um, I think ambassadors is one that's always kind of interested me, because I feel like that's one that could be improved for bringing in new people. At least I think the way that they do onboarding is definitely different from, I mean, it was with the whole mentorship process and then how you walk through the page, like with the ambassadors list being um, private by default, um, it's difficult for someone who's interested in being an ambassador to participate on that list um, or to communicate with other people who are interested or, or want to help or so on and so forth. Um, well, you have to be sponsored first. It's publicly viewable, but you can't participate you in the discussion. You just subscribe yourself to the list. Yeah. You get subscribed once you're so if I want to, is there a mechanism how I reach to ambassadors to find another ambassador? To find a sponsor. Yeah. No, no, I don't want to join. Uh, imagine a situation. Yeah. Where you're seeking advice from ambassadors. Well, you can still mail to the mailing list that it needs to be moderated manually. And who does that? Does, does it even happen or not? I do it. Uh, okay, so it happens. Yeah, but uh, right. rarely because of so much spam, your email can easily get lost. Um, and there also comes the problem too that they're not going to receive replies unless they're explicitly CC'd on the email too, or they're watching. Right, that's the same thing. But, um, no. Any any other suggestions you have? 
Um, so I think one thing that I, like short term for, or for the ambassadors, I think having, like going through the wiki pages for getting involved is five or six like pages with paragraphs and paragraphs of information, which is helpful for making sure that someone's really interested in understanding the full process of how to get involved, but it can also be just difficult to get through. And I think having like, if somebody wants to get involved with the with the ambassadors list, there's no place, or for the, the ambassadors, there's no place for them to look and have like one, two, three, four, five things I have to do to be involved. You have to go to maybe five or six different pages, uh, navigate through it all. I mean, it's not a very, I don't think it's a very clearly defined process like publicly. Like you have to, if you're in the ambassadors, you know it, or if you're going through the six different wiki pages, it's clear. So like one short term thing I think would be helpful for ambassadors is making the steps for becoming involved like an ordered series and having that on its own page with more details. But, but it's, it's a click through wizard. I mean, how can it be any simpler than that? Well, if you, if you look at the, the content on the pages, you have, I mean, it's just so much text and yeah, it, it, it's it, still it, a better rock than Beckett's. Well, it's, it's, right, it's, don't take it personally as no, a tech, but. Uh, the ambassador's group is not a beginner's group, and if somebody is not able to read a wiki page with more than five paragraphs, he shouldn't be an ambassador, period, full stop. Well, sure, but I think the point I'm getting at here is not that... It's the best. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to test your attention span. Uh, it's, no, seriously, it's... But, like, there's no, like, easy way to tell that from the outside. I don't know. I, I, think, I think it could be made more clear for the steps to become involved as an ambassador, because the pages are... I don't. I, I don't still think that method works that well for bringing. So kind of compromise here. What you can do is like, here are the rough steps to become an ambassador, and if you now you can read that. Read the, Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like yeah. Short list, and if you are still interested, now go and read the long thing. Right. That will still test their attention, and would be for us, for example, if they just. If I'm not interested in being an ambassador, but I'm just curious how that happens, yeah. the list would give me an idea. What do you think? You're reading the guy on stuff? Yes. I'm not saying that the guidelines are, are incorrect or that they're unnecessary. I'm no, just some, saying. Some steps are actually outdated or not, not up to That's <laughs> like you read Brad and Fedora, we should just add read Fedora magazine every day. Uh, but these are just minor glitches, I think, and it's not that the process is, is completely broken, or, and I don't think it's too complex at all. Might be because you are very familiar with it. Well, but it's, uh, we, set the, we set a certain bar for a reason. Yeah, 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 of course. Understand. Uh, so that's, that's why I'm saying keep it that way, but made it the too long to the read version. Just for people can get so a rough idea. So the, the, the click through wizard is five pages. Five. And actually, there is there is an overview page that outlines this. The process. Create a user wiki page. Explore the federal project. Request ambassador membership. Choose a mentor. Subscribe to the ambassador's mailing list. Done. That's five steps. And uh, of course, each of that is create a trust account. It's but otherwise, that's the thing you want to. Yeah, for some reason, so um, if you now click through the. Okay, there's great fast account. Yes. So, step two. So basically, if you take the headlines of those and you sort it in a list, yeah. you get what you want. And you can continue on clicking, then you will see it. Um, yeah, it's not the last thing. Yes, <laughs> uh, that's, that's a bit weird. Um, yeah, you can move it to the now, and If you see that, but there you have basically the overview. Okay, yeah. yeah that, that should basically be the this, first. This one? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here you have the five steps again. That should basically be the, this is where you should end up when you this, this the should start be the page. start, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So I think also with having that many pages too, it makes gardening it and maintaining it a little bit difficult with like some of the information that was on there. 
So I think maybe bringing it into like a single place would also be uh, helpful. This, this well, for me. Um, I have been... <coughs> well, let's think. It, it was designed like this for a reason. And there, there, a lot of work has gone into this. Um, the people to talk about, talk to, well, you can just look at the pages three who edit, edited these wiki pages, who created them. And ultimately, the reason is the people to talk to is Pharma, the Federal Agricultural yeah. Membership Administration. Um, we, as FAMSCO, also have some ideas how to, to improve the process, but really restructure, not like just change them. Yeah. Pages, but, but, uh, but again, I, as even as a FAMSCO member, even as somebody who has been around in the ambassadors for years and, and in FAMSCO for three or four years, I wouldn't just go ahead and do it. I would rather talk to the elders. Right. Yeah. Uh, parts. I mean, but yeah, I, mean, I wouldn't be suggesting like just going forward and just doing it. Right. It, there yes. would be discussion for it, of course. Um, but so my impression sometimes is that the ComOps team is a little it's Art. full of rookies, and, and they are very uh, proactive. Uh, well, they are freshmen, and they are very enthusiastic. And you you go forward at a pace, and sometimes you don't look left or right. Um, yeah. yeah, you need to be when, whenever you do something, and you are basically <laughs> collaborating with all the other groups in Fedora. I think you need to be very careful and get in touch with the stakeholders. And as far as I can see, it, it's something, I mean, this is just an example. I wouldn't dare touching it for the simple reason I know how much effort went into it, how we had endless discussions about these things. So, uh, and if you then come up with some improvement suggestions, they will just say, come on, we've been there, we've done that, go look it up on the mailing list, and you would have to search through mailing list archives of, of mails when you were still in high school or like years before you entered the, the federal project. So, yeah, sometimes I think it's, uh, it's difficult. On the one hand, of course, we want to have federal as an open platform and everybody should be able to participate and do their stuff. But on the other hand, um, make sure not to interfere with what, what others have done uh, before and, and it don't go like a pull those are yeah. uh, through, through the wiki. You can interfere, of course, I guess, but not like a pull those are. This is a good thing. Politics. Politics. <laughs> <laughs> And I mean, I think the, like the reason why I kind of like zoning on the ambassadors, like I think, I don't know if I necessarily agree with like kind of having the really high bar for them. I mean, not that what they're doing isn't, I mean, I, I don't, like the sponsorship, the mentorship, right, I agree with that. But like I think the process for getting involved, like I think ambassadors is one of like the greatest and easiest, yeah, easiest, but the, one of the greatest ways for people to get involved with the project. Because that's one of the ways it's, I think, bridging the gap between making users and bringing them into the project. Because uh, that would be, that would be everyone would be the ambassadors and no one would be completely. Actually, I would I would argue that when you have not understood the ambassadors project, uh, we had lengthy discussions if we should make it like a, at least a CLA CLA plus one other group. Like we, we won't some people even say we, we should not allow anybody to become an ambassador unless he or she has been a member of design or whatever, some other group. So it's definitely not a beginner's group. We want quality so over quantity. It's like when you're at, a, at an event and people ask really advanced questions, you, I mean, we, we don't want fanboys as, as ambassadors. Oh, right. And if, it, if it's just a low hanging fruit, uh, I'm afraid that, uh, I mean, we don't have, no, Bushal is not here, but you may be from India, I don't know, you're in Berlin, right? Yeah. But as far as I know, in APEC, they have a problem with the... Yeah, I know about it. Indian, the 
No, just in general, that's going on for ages, even yeah. before the Mozilla reps existed. Mm -hmm. It's that you get a lot of uh, Indian students to apply to become a Fedora ambassador mm -hmm. just to get a fedoraproject.org email address and to get the title because it looks yeah. like uh, nice on their resume. Yeah. That's why the requirements for the Indian ambassadors are actually stricter. On one of these pages it says, if you're a candidate from India, please make sure that uh, we require you to finish one project first. It can be like GSOC or, or taking part in the group for at least one week or whatever. Uh, one thing I would like to say here is that it's not just about finishing the project. You know? I mean, you cannot be an ambassador in, from India if you're a student. So don't you think that's a bit? You can. You, you can. can. You can. You can, yeah. but it says we don't encourage you to. But you still can if you are Fedora contributor and some mentor. If, if you have been around in the Fedora community for a year and helped in, say, packaging or what? Or uh, com ops, whatever. Or com ops or something, certainly nobody, I, I don't think a sponsor would reject you uh, just because you're a student. Uh, because you're a student. They apply for ambassadorship. I think uh, they'll be the sponsored because they've been working for like more than a year now. So they're students in college. And they have to make a job with Fedora Infra. So, but yes. they are working for Somebody from Fedora Infra, I mean, Fedora Infra, the bar is very high on purpose no, because right. you don't want to mess with critical infrastructure mm. if you're a newbie. But I also I, really like. I, for, I, mean, I would never re reject somebody from Infra. Yeah. But the, also, on the other hand, look at how easy it is to get into the infrastructure FI group. The apprentice program, like I really like that approach because it's a way to kind of get a taste of it and get involved with infrastructure without you know, having RMRF root, you know? I mean, I think that's a great, I, I really like their approach to doing that, because if you want to get involved, you drop an introduction, you say, hey, I want to do this, and you get read-only access to a handful of machines, so you can see what's going on on there, and you can kind of get, get familiar with the technology, and kind of see what's happening behind the scenes, and then you find a ticket that you want to work on, and... Who's, who's that? The, uh, the, apprenticeship. What, the what? apprenticeship program. I don't know when that, um, it's, the F, it's the FI group, um, but basically that's, it's like the preliminary step for infrastructure onboarding. So when you're getting involved with infrastructure, you first start as an apprentice. And when you apply for that, um, you do an introduction on the mailing list saying that you want to get involved, the things you want to assist with, the usual things. Um, and so then... But at that step, I mean, sorry to interrupt, yeah. but at that step you probably had already had to read more information I mean, if you tell them, I want to work on that, you need to know what that exactly they are doing. At that point, you have probably read more information than you will ever have to read uh, in, the, in the getting sponsored for the ambassadors' uh, weekly pages. So this is the, the page that kind of explains the... Well, but that, that, that's not really all. I mean... Um, you, you cannot say that's also a lot of text. Yeah, <laughs> it is. You cannot say well. And you cannot say I want to work on on meshing uh, if you don't know how Koji works and, and the neuro management works. And right. You know. But so what, at that point, what I kind of like about this though is that it's a beginning step. It's not like if you want to be in infrastructure, it's like okay, you have to do all these other things first to get involved. You can come in without having any background in Fedora. It, it happens. About every few weeks, there'll be a new introduction on the mailing list. Sometimes they stick around, they become active contributors. Other times, well, and what happens is at the, every, uh, the beginning of every month, an email goes out saying, uh, if you're in the infrastructure apprentice group, please reply. And like, it has questions to answer, like, what are you working on? Or have you tried logging into the machines? And are you still, are you still interested in being a part of it? And if they don't, if uh, Kevin doesn't get a reply, uh, they get removed from the infrastructure group and they lose the read-only access. But if they reply and saying, oh, yeah, like I'm still checking this out, or I'm involved, or I'm still playing around with things, trying to find a ticket to work on, they can maintain their read-only access, um, and if they're working on an issue, they can get support for that from the infrastructure team. How do you actually relate this to the to ambassador. ambassador program? So a lot of other programs, like I, I know Mozilla kind of has their own approach to it, but I think motivating students to do things on their own, or at least, and it isn't not just, not just students, but like the ability to self-organize and not necessarily, I, 
Because I kind of find the linking part because like when you become an ambassador, right, you represent Fedora and then you have to be accountable for your actions. You don't just go and say things which uh, do not have any weight. So whatever CA say as an ambassador that has Fedora behind Power, right, right. Yeah. right. So Branding. you have to be very responsible and cautious of what words you use and not use, right? Exactly. So, and that will not let any fan but So uh, a guy in new into Fedora can go and mess up with some test machines. Uh, it will not have uh, like hamper any public uh, instances or something like that because everything is a sandbox. But here, what do you make the sandbox to be? Like, how do you like contain that person so that he works in a like a contained environment? <laughs> Just like containers, like but, right. but you have to be his actions as a federal representative has to be on the phone. Right. It's associated with the building. So, uh, I'm not saying that that idea is bad, but how do you uh, translate that idea from federal infrastructure sure. apprentice to ambassador Ambassadors. apprentice? Isn't the mentor program something similar? But obviously, when you are trying to become an ambassador, it puts more responsibility on your shoulders because it's, it's your representing Fedora, right? So it's not something you can go and play around in front of the public. Right. So we have to be very much positive about the thing you say in public. It has to be coherent with the mission of Fedora, right? And that will come only if you stick with it for a longer time. Right, I completely if, agree. If you can find some sandbox yes. environment, like, that is good. But I, do, I don't see any sandbox environment for training ambassadors. If they're just, if their goal is just to become an ambassador, I think the goal is flawed. But if they want to be relevant to the community and then... Advocacy and then teach and show. Because right. I would like to, it's natural for every human being to uh, like advocate the things that he does and likes. So he has to like the project and he has to do something exciting in the project he's excited about. And he can go and then speak. He doesn't even need to become an ambassador. He can actually like go and speak to people. Yeah. Well, I think that would be like speaking either at like a, a local environment and like having kind of some kind of experience before that, whether it's like not as a Fedora ambassador, but let's say it's like giving a talk on something in Fedora, like hey, you know, here's this so cool that's thing. So that's what like if somebody like somebody becomes a translator, right, or somebody becomes a doc writer, or somebody becomes a, uh, like has at least one patch in Fedora, and he is excited about the thing he's doing, he can automatically go and speak to his peers, like classmates or people, right? That's why like, he has to get into Fedora via any other things than ambassador. So that, and if he's really enjoying his work, like I have got juniors who started their careers as translators because they're not good at programming, but now they're programmers. But they started and like, yeah, so, and they recruited me to translate uh, Fedora project for them. And that when have transfer, so it's very easy to get on transfers and translate. Uh, but you have to do something for the community, right? Right. So that's why, like, just, uh, I think ambassadors should not be the first point entry. And that's where I think a Mozilla Reps program has gone wrong because they don't think that I can be a Mozilla evangelizer even without knowing the uh, other like, principles of yeah. uh, Firefox, right? I do not say that, but, like, if you can find a sandbox environment, I think. Like, because uh, the mentors do not have so much time to go and like uh, team tour everyone to become an ambassador. Right. Uh, so, but if you can have some kind of like sandbox environment, if we have got an ambassador in a college, he can maybe before he gets out of the college, he can uh, train someone, uh, take him, uh, in, like share his load when he conducts events in the college. And by the time he graduates, he can actually have an ambassador ready in the campus. But it's a long term thing. It's, it's not that like he becomes ambassador in a day or a month. Like he goes through the training process, and like, and that also depends that that candidate has to be interested in the process, right? Like, uh, if, if somebody wants the results in like one month, not a thing. Right. Can we can we come up with a sandbox kind of like a process like how we can actually make contributors and then turn them to ambassadors? Right. The apprentice yeah. program is very good. Someone can contribute to any project, any subproject of Fedora, and then slowly you see that they are like sticking with the project. Then ask them to refer to the in their area. I completely agree. Yeah, it's it's a tough question because um, I mean, really, it would, the only sandbox I could think of, really think of would be things that they're doing on their own locally, mm -hmm. not directly associated as Fedora, but mm -hmm. just. Um, local advocacy that they're already doing, but 
You know, and that might not be the best approach for us. I know instances where like people are making money out of Mozilla because I know people who have rented uh, places and they draw like 30k INR a month when they rent out the places they like it. They have people are doing shit like that. Yeah. So you don't want those kind of people to kind of ruin the community, right? Right. But that has been an ongoing problem in India or in the APEC region. We also had some, some. We even had some cases of fraud where people took money for events that mm -hmm. never happened and so on. So it's not limited to Mozilla, uh, but it's for some reason it's always a yeah, in, in particular India. I don't know why, mm -hmm. and that's why we, as like the ambassadors, are very strict about certain things. Yeah, mm -hmm. we just had a session in Francisco, and and it's difficult um, to find the right to make the bar high, to not too high, not too low. Like we recently managed to grow the Albanian community quite a lot. Um, and, and I think we are totally willing to, to invest in, the, in that community, uh, like manpower and, and even money or so. So for them, I would, maybe I wouldn't be as strict. But for, on the other hand, in India, I would be more strict because we already have an established community of and a lot of ambassadors there, so it's difficult. That's why we still have the sponsors. It's like I know that Comops is doing a lot of stuff with, with technology, for example, or, or other groups are doing uh, a lot of automated tasks. For example, the email that Kevin sends out and every month is it? It's probably a Chrome job. I believe so. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. But you cannot, uh, you still need, at the end of the day, a human mm -hmm. needs to make a decision. Right? And it, it's, a, it's a gut feeling that the sponsor has. All right, and I think the human interaction for ambassadors, especially seeing as it deals with so much human interaction, I think that makes sense for that group. I'm not saying, like, remove the sponsorship. No, 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 no. Yeah. that's obvious. I mean, yeah. I know you're saying that. But, uh, I mean, if you're, if you're um, what I wanted to say is, if, you're, if you have suggestions how to improve the process, uh, Go ahead, do it, but brace yourself uh, for some people yelling at you. There will be people who have been around in, in the community for so long, uh, and they will just, oh, this newbie guy, what, what's he to tell us? Uh, uh, and to some degree, you can understand their point of view. I mean, I, I can understand your point of view, everything uh, to, to happen as good. you want to be productive and you want to enable others to be productive and so on. It's, and, and, I mean, you need both sides also. Like the, the old farts sometimes are too narrow-minded. It has always been like this, but we keep it this way. Um, it's hard to strike a balance there. I do not disagree on the part that actually in India currently the situation is that the number of ambassadors in the side of India is kind of less because I was in the country that I moved to another city so the events in that city stopped happening. Uh, so actually I should have created an ambassador in that place before coming to a different city. So we need to have more contributors and uh, like people who get evangelists, etc. Uh, but first best approach to get them, connect more college events because like uh, or like uh, go to work. as I raised the question in the class committee, right? How do we like uh, do that? Like because like because I'm also limited in time because I work on my projects in the weekends. So like, but an organized effort has to be made because I see that platform happens. But after after platform happens in the college, people volunteer and after platform what? We are the federal country leaders who we, we go there, we come back from there, but. Are there any follow-ups done for the people who have been referred who are not in the community? We, I do not see much faces. Every time Patcon happens, I do not see like very few faces will see that we saw last Patcon and they have attended it. So how like because we invest a lot of money to have a Patcon or an event like that, right? So right. we need to have a proper follow-up strategy that we can like at least like Patcon happens in a college and in different colleges every year. So at least we should en ensure that like. 10% from that college should come and stick with the community, right? And what is the strategy to actually make that happen? 
Because otherwise, I see that like. So you want 10% of all the new computers to be onboarded to work on to remain if you come now 10% of the new computers? At least 10% of like 1000 or it will be like less than 0.1%, but something like that, right? Because otherwise, you see that like perform we do only for the computers to get in and uh, meet physically with each other, with whom we have been talking over IRC. That's only a place for us interacting with each other, but, uh, other, but like what about spreading the number of contributor pages? So I think one focus of the event should also be that, that we have to increase contributors with every fraction or every fad. Even like mm -hmm. fad uh, happens, right? But mostly the contributors go there and they hack together. But like we have to also, the one agenda should be there that we have to get new contributors as well. Right. But how to reach that? We reach the college through the professors or like uh, we reach the local clubs in the college or we reach other corporates because many people in the corporates right they uh, many people are not happy with the jobs maybe they would like and love the kind of like things you do in open source uh, but uh, what are the like how to best put your energy so that you can like reach them properly and convince like not convince exactly like spread the message like yeah we are doing some cool stuff you can help them like help us right um, uh, for example, like uh, we have people like uh, we can take sessions, we can take uh, TikToks, and we can teach Python and all the stuff which students would love. But yeah, me personally, I'm not that people person. Right. Uh, I can go and teach stuff, but like yeah, uh, setting up the communication bridge and talking to the stakeholders and professors and all, I can do that. But like yeah, I'm uh, I'm not the best person for that. But yes, once the things are set up and like yeah, uh, you need to take classes and all, we can do that. We have got bunches of people, bunch of people in Red Hat and uh, federal friends. We can do that. Mm -hmm. We can invite people. But yeah, we need to s like start some momentum because currently, although we are very strict and we have a vision for that, number of contributors of Fedora are very less in India. But we want quality as well. Right. So then there's probably a. And the way that's communicated for people to get involved and then I mean, entertainment also seems, since what you said about like FUDCOM, like the people changing all the time too. So it seems like there's also an issue about contain, uh, retainment and yeah. keeping the same contributors too over time. So I guess the, the next step would be to really kind of identify like, so what happens in the life cycle of a contributor? Like what, at what point after the event would, for the retainment side of it at least, at what point would they become less active and was there a certain event or is there a certain time period that after so long they stopped contributing or they stopped being involved with the project or did they just decrease what they were doing and then just dropped off? Um, I um, think we already started, I mean the work that you've done is, is already a very good starting point. Um, yeah, I think we need to further go down that road. Like the first step for me was be so we figured out like fifty percent uh, leaving after three months or so. Yeah. So for me, the first step was would be to identify what have they done before they have left. If it turns out they have only edited the wiki, no. uh, no, then I you those. So okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But just an example, if it turned out they only edited the wiki uh, then this year it was probably just a spammer and it's not, we shouldn't cry a tear for it. Uh, if it turns out that this, they have tried to enter this or that group and haven't succeeded, then obviously we have a problem with the onboarding process there. Um, so let's try to find patterns. Uh, I'm not sure how much time to, you spent on that already and how much time do you have to, to work on that, but if we figure out patterns, and also I like the idea of a survey. Somebody came up with the idea of a survey. Yeah. Uh, like we figure, we realize you're no longer active. Uh, can you please tell us? And it, it needs it need to be like not a survey only, but a, but an email that tells you um, we would like you to take part in the survey, fill out the survey, and then uh, give us some feedback to improve. And if you have any problems that you would like to discuss with the human, here's who you can talk to or something. So it should be like not only a fully automated process. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that uh, I'll share some experience from Python India. 
So last year, uh, I think last, last year we had a program called Python Express or Python Mom. Uh, so one of the most was Python. We start doing small, small events in various colleges around the area so that it's not the students from the city that comes to the event, but people from remote different parts of the country, they also get inspired to come to Python, which takes place in the city, right? So that event actually draws more people than just the people in the, that particular college where the event is happening. So we have got like more the number, so the, the probability of getting categories also increases, right? Of people like joining the Python, Python movement, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe you can have like, before Python, right? You can plan say a series of events, maybe like one event in two months or like maybe something like that. And people can like, take turns and go to places so that like you have more better awareness and things get geared up for Python and you have got a bigger presence of students uh, or people from different parts of the different cities mm -hmm. so that uh, we also get leaves to actually go to different cities from uh, because mostly in India Python happens in Pune. Pune is also already a Red Hat place, people know about Red Hat. We need to reach out to the other cities like as you said, we, like uh, Yen said, right, uh, we need to go to other countries as well, right? Similarly, we need to reach out to places which are which not have a Red Hat office, right? Right. So if you can keep uh, like uh, uh, connecting small micro events in uh, colleges around this city where Patron is happening, we can draw this public and yeah, so and we can have interest. a small club, federal club open in that college, mm -hmm. and slowly the number of people will drop off. Okay. So maybe we could have pads in the college. Yeah. That is like very like it can hold a very large sure you can take this one. Assistance. Or is actually is that one right there? Oh. But we do need we need to have that person. Yeah. Like we need someone on the field who can actually help us do units. So I think probably coming up with a list of like action items from all of this would be helpful. Um, I think you can add the points like whatever we discussed like. Yeah, we should encourage pairs, not that high value pairs, like just like small, like good colleges in near the new city and then I will one day. Yeah, the contributors are already there. Or not there, like one city. I think uh, rather than reaching out to the uh, like students, we should reach out to the professors because. But professors are not always that welcome. I don't know. So, yeah. That's why you need a uh, person who can actually like, like, this. Is, is it that no, not, I mean, some manager type. Yeah, I know. Like, yeah, yeah. If you're not a manager in India, you're not a super director. <laughs> gotcha. So, uh, masters. Yeah. Well, I think I think I think now. Yeah, we're we're in the last forty minutes, so I think I'd like to spend the last forty minutes going over some like creating some action items out of this, mm -hmm. as well as covering a little bit with elections too. I mm mean. -hmm. Um, Dig these back up again. So some of the things, some of the other last little things that we wanted to do would be, so with all this discussion is coming up with action items, like for the ambassador discussion and the Python SIG discussion, mm -hmm. these were things that were kind of, or at least for ambassadors we had, a, we were aware of, they wanted to go into and pursue. Mm -hmm. So now that we kind of have the background, as we hadn't really started on looking at looking to ambassadors yet, um, so we kind of have this background information. Mm -hmm. um, I think adding to that with some of this discussion that we had today for creating a proposal or coming up with um, a way of going to tackle that one would be most helpful for ambassadors. Python SIG, putting that one on the agenda will be helpful. And that would be a little bit of brainstorming and uh, tickets. Um, and that would, okay, so yeah, those two I think are definitely probably the biggest action items with condensing the information from the ambassador's discussion down into something that's like bullet points. Um, same for Python SIG, I think we have that for Python SIG now. Um, and then one other thing I, since uh, I'd like to talk about too, or we would like to talk about is the with Fedora elections. Um, is, uh, that was one that we helped with in December or so. And Like the voter turnout right now in federal elections is really less. So we were 
thinking of ways you could improve water turnout. I mean, in the November-December cycle, and we wanted to implement some of it in the current one in the summer cycle, but we, we it was impossible to do it. But we will. <laughs> so, but we were thinking about having some sort of uh, some sort of docks or surveys of why people are turning up, like. Just say badges. Badges. But uh, this one thing we saw was that whenever we sent out like reminder mails or something, it's uh, there was suddenly a peak in the number of voters. Like, that day. Yeah, the next day. So I don't know. But are there any suggestions like, apart from badges? Another and coming up with ways, I think, also with improving or uh, increasing interaction between the candidates and the community. So it's not so much as um, in some cases, you know, some people don't even put out interviews, but it's not as much as like, oh, did they have an interview? I'm going to read it. Maybe they have follow up questions like, what ways could be improved? How that's communicated and letting people interact more with candidates and make it a more engaging election experience. Do you have any suggestions? Well, some of the things that we did for so the one the election that happened in December was um, the fourth most participated in election in all of uh, yeah um, and some of the things that we did were like improving communication, which was one thing that had an impact with how often it was communicated using the community blog to publish the interviews um, and I think. I think the one thing I, I kind of picked up on, at least in December, was that the questionnaire form, I mean, it's on the wiki, but I guess it's not, I don't think it's communicated as well, that that's, like a, that's a thing that's available in there, unless you, when you get the original email about election time, and you dig into it, and then you go to like, oh, and then here's this page about the questionnaire. Like, I don't think that's, I think, I think coming up with more engaging ways for people to put out their own thoughts for, you know, what questions they want to ask the candidates and what issues are at stake, even, whether it's like, Putting up a list of like things happening that are would be affected by this election, like so, like let's say it was a FAMSCO one, you could say here's like information, like so it's FOSCO and other things happening, just some added context for that. And if someone had questions relating to that, they're like oh, you know, well what is all of this and how would this part work? Or they could submit a question because like the interview questions for the past two elections were the exact same. They had yeah, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. I, I um, usually find, find myself the only uh, I had questions. I, I have questions, questions and then answer my own questions. Yeah, so I think Which that's kind of unfair right. for the other, candidate, other candidates. So then I think there's probably ways that we could try to, I guess, better communicate the availability, or even maybe a different method, like instead of having like a wiki page, and especially now that the the wiki is CLA plus one with the spammers, like that that's isolating a lot of people from I contributing. I think that uh, uh, yeah, getting getting the interviews out to the people is the most important part, and I think we have all or you have already done a great job with uh, whoever did it on Fedora magazine. Uh, that should improve things quite a lot, I think. Uh, one thing we did in the past were the town hall meetings, yeah, RC, and that didn't really work out. Or at some point, uh, this is time zones. And well, that's. Well, as always with the meetings, you have time zone issues, even if you manage to, well, we solved that problem by having different uh, town halls, like at least two different appointments, so we, we, we are sure that everyone has at least one in his time zone, but otherwise it's, it's hard to find the uh, sort of, also the, I, I think the election wrangler just goes ahead and says, these are the two possible times. Please show up. If you ask all candidates, will all be when it's good for, or uh, that will end up nowhere. Right. And and all the, the turnover in terms of, of participants in the meeting was also not. Uh, yeah. We say not that's satisfying. True. Not satisfying. Uh, not, not So then, I'm trying to think of some different ways that we could try to have people collaborate with I mean, adding questions in. We could even, I'm not sure if it works, if we have a like, policy on so, using social media, but uh, there's the Fedora Community Folks group hey. on Facebook and we could post the interviews there or we could make 
virtual questionnaires there. Yeah. Or you can do polls on the Fedora uh, Facebook page. We have a Fedora community on Google Plus too. So there's. But I'm not sure if we want to go down right. the social media. And roles. plus, it's a different audience too for the. So I mean, we do have we definitely have a contributor audience there too, but it's also the, like the, the mass hordes of. All the users too. Yes, I uh, right. I like the idea though. That's actually. I like the idea, but again, brace yourself for some people yelling at you. Yeah. <laughs> Can we have polls on the com blog? Huh? Can we have like polls on the com blog, community blog? Can we? Conduct How would we? Yeah, I think we definitely. That's restricted to Fedora. Right. Definitely. But then, like, my I guess my question then would be like, what would we be taking to like, what would be what would be the form of taking the questions like WordPress comments, and people could like comment with ideas for questions and we just promote the article. I think commenting on the blog, asking that's a good idea, or even on Facebook or whatever. It's uh, mm -hmm. yeah, if you share the link to the article and you can leave ideas for that would be one way to take it. I mean, you probably have to aggregate everything in the wiki first, then people can fill up or... Is it done by, by wiki or sending emails to the candidates? For the questionnaires or the interviews? Pardon? For the questionnaires or the interviews? The questionnaires. The questionnaire is all in the, um, the wiki, and then you just take those questions and answer them in the... the uh, right, no, but it's, I think it's, it's email first, and the wrangler puts it on the wiki. Because otherwise, we're just... People would just copy what the previous guy candidate has said. Oh well, for the past two release cycles, it's been taking uh, just the yes. person publishes it. Well, not publishes it, but they they publish the draft on the com blog, and then an editor reviews it, and then pushes it out. Oh, okay. And I, I feel like if somebody were copying blatantly, like I feel like that'd be. Okay, I, it's been I mean, a while since I had to run for elections. So. It was just it, it was over the past two release cycles. It was mostly. Um, I mean, it's it's up to the candidates. It's it's up to their to them to, to log into the com blog, and I mean it's and it's the same form because there's still a human interaction there. They can't just log on to the blog and just like publish it. There's still like a like a green light that they go through. Um, so I guess it's just a different method to the same kind of the same way as before. Um, but I I think we could probably aggregate like some of the commenting. Like having it aggregated in some place would be useful. Um, yeah, also I like the idea of having polls in the wiki, but it seems we would need another WordPress plugin for that. And do you think like sending out surveys after the election it would help improving the voter turnout? Like for the next cycle, could we get feedback on that? No, for the sure. head? Who do you want to interview? Like the people who no, no. voted or who didn't vote or like in general? In general. Well, I mean, and actually, in all seriousness, oh, having a badge did, for voting, that was... that did we have a I voted badge? No. No, and that was an interesting thing, because I think I remember seeing on a list somewhere... So the, the reason why we don't have one is because... We don't want to declare the, who voted and who didn't vote. Right. So, so the, then you can, uh, if you, when you vote, there can be a checkbox. I am okay with getting the badge. And, and privacy it will disclose the information that I have voted, but it will not disclose the information yes. where I have voted. Well, the, the problem is I think in the voting application, that data is not even saved. Um, I think there's a list of, well, I mean, there's obviously an you account voted. that voted, right. But the information like um, like who you voted for isn't saved. So that's, course, right. So that's not. But he doesn't to have and, that for a badge. And I think the, this producer fan message that says, this user voted in this election, period. You don't right. say who you ordered for. And I think the, the thing with that too is that, um, well then like if someone votes and they get the badge, um, I think there was a concern about like, I remember this, this, the suggestion I read was that after the election, so at the end of the election there's like a hook that's pushed 
where all the people who were voted would it would be triggered and everyone would receive the badge after the election window closes. I'm trying to remember what the what the privacy concern was with why like doing it at uh, the end uh, versus the first person votes, and you could actually see the data about votes. Yeah. They are not public visible, but maybe the infra people can see them. Then you could see what the first person voted for. I think but that was something along those lines. Infra people can see a lot of stuff anyway. <laughs> So I don't think that's a primary concern, but what you said, if like pushing the badges after works as well. Right. And we have to keep the information who voted, because otherwise you could vote twice. So we have the information. I want the badge. I want it for the winner. Well, we actually, we <laughs> all, I voted for the winner badge. Right? Uh, well, we, for the we, winner. Have, we have uh, Fedora, I voted. Sticker, the sticker, already, yeah. And people post it on their, their blogs. Facebook page, page yeah. or whatnot. So I guess they should be okay with getting it back. I don't think... I'm concerned about privacy, but I don't see a problem there. Yeah. I mean, I, and I think if it were the method, like, after the election closes, then I don't... I, I'm even an opt. I, mean, I, well, I guess that could maybe fit in with the discussion about like. Well, the actually, you want the you want the actually you want the, the the badge to show up immediately because you want to encourage others to vote. Yeah, and I don't think yeah. that like yes, of course. If if somebody sees the intermediate results, if the if the intermediate results are public, then after the first no. person votes, you yeah. would see that, but they are not public. They are not. How about we make like the earlier you vote, uh, the more your vote counts. <laughs> <laughs> or the more badges you have. You know, if you if you vote in the first second, you got seven. So the voting period is is seven days. If you vote on the se first day, it counts seven times. <laughs> you vote on the no, just kidding. Or what if it's um, being sent now like a mail to uh, the mailing list? After every day, like 98 people voted today, or like 50 people voted today, something like that. Yeah, that would be cool. Oh, but on the other hand, it can be pretty depressing. Like, five well, people. Like, well, in the overall terrible, how much percent is it? On some days, like on the first day when elections open, it's at its usually at its highest, and then during the yeah. week. And I mean, it just dips down, and then on the last day, it's it goes back up. Yeah, it would have to have some, some kind of graphical representation, like on Kickstarter, where you have a bar. Basically, yeah. I mean, basically the same with the Kickstarter campaign. You open the campaign, a lot of people throw money at you, and it goes down and down and down. And you need to keep your uh, your audience entertained with constant updates. So that's why I like your idea about the uh, email. Yeah. Um, yeah. Also, some some graphical representation. Please help us getting this bar over X percent. Like. The next goal is X many people vote to like just some good stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And having yeah. that on a very prominent uh, page, uh, I'm not saying start or for our project or more, but some there. Yes. I think we should have for the start of the our project, or we have, I mean, it's basically less than RSS feed reader. But I don't think we publish anything related to the election, and because that's for general users, so the election related stuff has been moved to community blog because it's only for the community. Right. Okay, hmm, where can we go? It should be really prominent. like For the elections? I believe, I, I think in December, like we had like an announcement about the elections on the magazine, but like what we found in the magazine was that when we publish like candidate interviews and those kind of things, those are the like, those are the lowest received articles. There's a very low number of people reading and receiving them there, just because it's a different kind of audience. So with the magazine, it's a largely like kind of like I think like if you were to post on like the whole thing on Facebook, like come vote in the election kind of deal is, you're you're communicating to a small subset of contributors, but you're also appealing to a large amount of just general users, which depending on how it's worded or the context of it, like the election, like the interviews, I think is it the right, I don't think the magazine is the right place for it, but encouraging, like having the resources, like here's the elections, here's what they mean, here's how you can get involved would be more appropriate for like a social media 
or a magazine post. And then like I do like the idea of using social media for like people proposing questions too, because um, I, I actually I really like that idea. Um, well, sometimes it would also. I mean, I see why we are separating Fedora magazine and the community blog, like users and contributors or mm -hmm. um, But what we could still do is uh, like some some teaser article <laughs> on uh, on Fedora magazine because often it's like, for example, you have a newspaper and they have this other thing for a certain target. User, user group, like, uh, I'm not sure what's it like in the US, but in Germany you have, you have a newspaper that's like the old school newspaper classic, and then they have a spin off which is more BuzzFeed like or something to attract younger readers. Right. And they just use their front page to also promote their, sub, their spin off. Oh. And then we would just, just have a teaser, a very short answer, of course, it will be. It probably will also get bad numbers in terms of readers, but uh, depending on how it's approached, it's just a small teaser that pushes you over from Fedora magazine to the community Mini blog. blog. Yeah, and that's something that we do on the magazine too, or that we do do on the magazine is um, we do pointer posts where it's like a very like let's say we have a longer thing on the com blog, we'll do like a very shortened and condensed quick summary on the magazine with a link yeah, to the right. quick we pointer. We all about it on the community Mini blog. blog. Um, and that's generally been received pretty well. So then the people who are want to engage with it can open it, and if they just want to get a quick read, they can get a quick sense of what's happening and it's promoting it. Um, but I, I, I'm pretty sure we did do that in December for the elections. But I, I, I don't think I got. On, I don't think I was on top of it for June. Um, I, I know we didn't do anything for it on, in June on the magazine, um, which is something that I think would actually be pretty uh, being consistent about it would be an effective thing for encouraging people to bring, uh, to at least raise awareness about the elections happening uh, for users who are interested. Um, I think a badge would definitely be, a, uh, an I voted badge would definitely be a tremendous impact on voting every election. And probably one, maybe one for voting every release cycle, because then everyone's gonna vote like in their one election, and then they're just not <laughs> gonna vote again. Or they're all like, ah, it's no, it's not as big of a deal, or you know. Um, so, if, oh, and going back to the idea about um, sending out a survey after the election, um, I'm trying to think about what would be the best way of collecting that because I know the diversity team has. Um, like a Lime survey or something they're using, which is, I, I know it's a closed tool, but. Um, the survey monkey, I just saw something from survey monkey. I think uh, the uh, UI, UX intern, Radhika sent it, but. And depending on what it is, especially when it comes to collecting data, I, I'm just trying to imagine like, it's like I know great tools for it, but it's like I know they're all closed or proprietary and I don't know what kind of, I don't think that would send that, I don't know, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a touchy topic. Um, I guess I would just need a little bit of extra consideration. Um, and that would be one to follow up with Tatika, with the diversity team, what they're doing, or what options are. So I guess like the best example that I can think of is community metrics is um, B wrote a report on FOSDEM 2014 and 2015, and did we do 2016? Yeah, but I, I think it was only a month after FOSDEM, so maybe yeah. we lost the Different sample, right. So, so she collected, uh, she looked at like the people who scanned the badge of FOSDEM for 20, all three years. 
And so you, she was able to tell that there's the number of people who already had the FAST account before FOSDEM and look at their activity or contribution levels before the event. Um, oh, should I pull up the... Is there a blog post? Yes, there is. I have for the, I guess, because, yeah, yeah, this one. Um, and this is, I think, this, this is the kind of idea behind community metrics, like the things that you all as contributors think would be useful, especially I know for ambassadors, there's definitely the need with in terms of like trying to put numbers or something that's not a really number thing. But it definitely can go far beyond just, since we've already focused so much on ambassadors, I mean, there's definitely other places it could be applied towards. Um, so, yeah, feel free. So, for those who don't know about this, this was about like how FOSFEM attending FOSDEM impacted the activity of the contributors and then we also got the number of newcomers who were on board right, from each FOSDEM. But I think from your talk, uh, I just realized that uh, in two, was it in 2015, when were you doing missions? No, this year, 2016. Yeah, so in FOSDEM 2016, they were giving Fedora t-shirts so not everybody could get the badge and I think only the people we're yeah. collecting t-shirts. The major problem with that is it's the registration is of the FAS account is FAS system is very unreliable. So people were struggling with that and some of them just gave up after like five or six attempts. I I've had the same problem at like with Brickhack at RIT here, like this, the problems with the FAS. I think FAS, I haven't really followed it, but I know FAST is about to get a huge rewrite and yeah, FAST 3. Plus three is coming, but I don't know what it's when. Because <laughs> that's definitely. Like is coming, and it took five yeah, seasons. So. Yeah, and I think that would at least towards the application of this, I think fast three would be a huge help because I I had the same problem. People were signing up for a fast account, and they're like, oh, "What is this? Like, you know, this is either just not intuitive or I, I think it'd be useful." <laughs> well, no, because I that's well, I had people like student like uh, a, you, you're so yeah, you're lucky that you were. Uh, not um, around in the early days. <laughs> Fast one. In, in the early days, you needed to download a file, the <laughs> contributor license agreement, sign it with your GPG key, and send <laughs> it back. And I mean, at that point, you basically already exclude every person that doesn't have a GPG key. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, these are some kind of metrics. Then I also compiled some metrics for Comox, like how we have been growing, what sort of work we have been doing. It was for the year interview report. Uh, so then, for Comox specific, yeah. I think we were first. Yeah, <laughs> um, it was here. Do you put it out on here? I think there are more metrics on, like, in my blog post that Oh, on yours? From, from the video. Was it this one? Or? No. Anyway. Yeah. If, 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 oh. Do, do you really want to see? I was just giving examples of metrics and I, will, I wanted suggestions from you on what kind of metrics I should work on, something you would really like to see, so something for the teams. Have you an idea? Uh, no, you first. So I, we had a Fedora release party 24 in Prague recently and I gave a little talk about how you can get badges for easy things like giving karma. And I would love to be able to give uh, people like a badge for attending the party, release party. There is already badges for organizing one. Uh, let's have a party. Oh, uh, yeah. But you can also have a badge. I attended the party for 34, 33. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you probably don't, uh, you don't probably want uh, different badges for different locations because then you would have like hundreds and hundreds of badges just for release parties. But then you can like, I don't know, create the QR code and uh, check how many, uh, what usernames already have the badge. And after the event ends, you will check the diff and you will get the usernames of people who actually claim the badge. And it will give us information about if the, if the people who are coming to release parties are even interested in the badges thing. 
uh, how many if they created their first accounts just because of that or if they already have it. And if they come, uh, you know, if there is an extra release party for the next release, if it's the same people or different people and stuff like that. What do you do, if, what do you see in data grabber uh, or wh when somebody claims a badge? Uh, I mean, can you, see, yeah. can you see like the IP address where it came from? Or no, 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 that's the process, process just a day, the fast username. That's the fast yeah. account, okay. Fast account, name of the badge, link to the badge, yeah. okay, and probably time of date. Yeah, time, yeah, but it's already time of date. Well, time zone could tell you something. Uh, no, it's not no, no, like no, no. It, it's the epoch that is Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Well, well, but even the timestamp should be able to tell you something about the number of events. <laughs> unless you have to, I mean... Unless I, you have two release parties at, at the same, same time. time. Yes, but I would expect if we have a release party, so, well, it, it should be, it should have peaks when the... Uh, yeah. Uh, when they were claimed the, the batch, and that is probably one release party event. And yeah, and you, you could do a nice graphic with, with the peaks and put the city's names on the top of those yeah. peaks. So and you can see that, for example, in Inferno, everybody from the release party is from Red Hat and has a plus account, so <laughs> the peak would be like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Generally, I'd love to see statistics that are based on like uh, geography. I mean, like because like every every fast account. But can you can you take fast accounts in, in like data like, you can, uh, So there are some like uh, I mean there are some topics for fast in data paper, but what sort? I mean you cannot I mean, get. Because like, uh, like when you create a fast account, you can specify specify where you are from. Yeah. This way, like we can, for example, so see data, data like where, where the community is, like like yeah. where we have any active contributors. So and we were discussing about this just yesterday. So what I learned was, uh, I mean, you cannot get that from data level, but I can get that from some other way, like, like where the fast account. So that I'm working on that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So basically, some sort of like uh, a group a global map and then the number of views contributors from each country active and so There actually is a map of um, yeah, let me see if I can find it. It's it's old. It's really it's an old well I'm trying to remember the it's it's in infrastructure I think. No, well there's one in the wiki if you search for No, it's like an actual like, membership verification yes. but is that the world map? No, there's like a world map of um, that is oh. auto generated. The wiki page is generated from the uh, settings in, in fast. Here it is. Now I don't know if this is based on. Yes. yes. That's based on fast, but that's only ambassadors. Only ambassadors, and I think it's. I don't know if it's querying from. If like, is that I know you can insert your your GPS coordinates. No, no, it's country. Country. Well, for it, also, it knows so cities. It also, and if I look at India, definitely. Oh, I need to update my GPS code. I need to start a batch for updating your GPS. <laughs> well, I was thinking about this. So, like, if you're getting, if you're, if you're like signing up for a fast account, GPS coordinates. What? So I'm wondering if like Fast Three would be a better idea to have something where they can specify their city that they're from, country, outright, and then you could. Obviously, protect that if they have the privacy flag on for their account, that won't be shared. Um, but that might be a powerful way to encourage people to put that information there. I, I, I don't know why it's not rendering. It might just be the, the network here because it was rendering for me before. Um, for me, it's rendering. That's fine. Okay, it might just be something on my laptop. Do we have something like this just for like overall contributors? No. I don't think so. I think it's just it's, ambassadors. If you go one step further up, it's only ambassadors. It's, it says choose a page, and the only page you could choose it are the ambassadors. So obviously, we wanted to do that for other groups as well. Nobody ever did. Right. I'm not sure where it's querying. I'm still trying to think about where it's getting this information from. Fast. It's definitely. But like, I mean, definitely fast. But like, is it like, is it GPS coordinates? Like is that? Yes. Has to be, I guess. Yeah, there's a feel the feels for it. it. Yeah. Hmm. So may making that something a little bit more accessible for like putting uh, that that would be a, something to follow up with in Fast Three. 
would be to make sure there's like a the GPS coordinates thing <laughs> or field is replaced with something a little bit more easily or understood. Even on the map, it would be yeah, or even like an interactive like pin on the map or like a maps is kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, that would be that would actually be really interesting. And then, so like, where where were you thinking, Judy? Where were you thinking, like, so with this, like, if you had like an like something like a, a map of like the global contributors of Fedora, what kind of data would you want to generate with that? Yeah, like uh, Matthew always shows the like the, how many contributors we have, for example, in body, and then uh, for example, active packages, stuff like that. Like, it would be interesting to have it so you know, open open up into like countries or regions to see where we are going pretty well, so where we, maybe we can... So, but for overall Fedora contributors, right? Not team members. Yes, uh, for, I mean, uh, where you can easily, you know, identify that someone is active. And you can like, fill... It's those stadiums, like packages, like testers and well, and for example, people who edit wiki, you know, so you can easily identify that person is contributing or not. For, for ambassadors, it, like it's it's difficult to you know get a identify an active ambassador. Every time you are um, doing something ambassadory, you will just submit that message from your hand. So one thing you could do is filter by fast group for that location, yeah. and you could see like so like for this group, if it's like Bodhi contributors, you can see where they fit in, or like the number of contributors for each fast group. Um, Anything else? I I think it'd be interesting to look at like globalization, especially to see like communities that are active with translations and okay. where they. Oh, yeah yeah yeah. Oh, yeah. Be there a little bit. <laughs> um, Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you, Milo. <laughs> you can just form a circle and pass pass everybody on the IRC. Hey, <laughs> one more and I get my, my rainbow cookie badge. <laughs> really rainbow already? Yeah. <laughs> uh, unicorn blue is the last one? Or? Yeah, Patrick will probably get there first though. <laughs> um, so, so we have our, our coordinates yeah. in the uh, past. I guess that, that has to be where it's pulling from. Like, that, that, that map is extremely outdated, like yeah. six years old at least. Yeah. Well, like I know it's like, oh, I'm on, like I, I, I can find my, my city on there, so I think it's still maintained, or at least it, it functions, but whether or not people are updating that or like updating their, their GPS coordinates or... Um, I mean, I've got, I have had the, the GPS coordinates in my account yeah. for years and I'm not showing up. On oh, really? And there's, my in the Czech Republic, there is only one ambassador, and that's the, uh, the guy who was before me, so it's like at least six years old, maybe more. Yeah, it only lists really old ambassadors Peter, Gerold, Fabian, Marek. I think that would be a cool one to do, like if you look at translations and like if you have an active pocket that's like a really small, like consistent, but it's making very small progress, I could look at that and be like, oh, here's a community that's translating to um, Norwegian or, you know, whatever. And if, if, it's, if there's a few people there, that's something you could know, like there's a community here, there's something happening here that could become a larger, a larger effort and it kind of would be something to direct attention to, I guess. I don't know. Does that make sense? I guess we probably are close to packing up. Is there anything else that we want to? Really? Yeah. 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 Has any of you heard of Vitergia? It's a co company from Spain or Portugal. They are doing open source 
matrix, they have a whole range of tools which are open What's source. What's the name? Yeah. yeah. I think they, they once told me that they had spoken to Remy at least. And oh, uh, they have a uh, really broad range of, of uh, metrics that you can do on the picture, I think. Uh, yeah. Something like that? I don't know what Black Dark does, it, but it's like, mm -hmm. well, they, they, you have a dashboard where you have nice over, like, graphical representation of all the, so a lot of things that he probably has done, so they, they have, like, a modular architecture, and you can input all kinds of wrappers, okay. but I don't think that a data wrapper integration already exists, I mean, that, that would, enable us to combine all these different sources like they already have uh, records for like open source? Like yeah. open source software. Well, I mean, the of course they make money from yeah. consulting mm -hmm. around it and I make the magazine for customers. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we should definitely look into that because Yeah, I mean, at this point though, I'm kind of in the same, I mean, I kind of feel like the same thing because it's like, it's always, well, I think in the beginning, right, in the beginning it wasn't nearly like it is now, but like yeah. now it's, 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 uh, it's like an overpowers marketing. Like, I feel like if the, <laughs> you pull the magazine away at the marketing list. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, right. They have there is an objective problem. An issue. Uh, 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 that's, that's my problem. Because I might but once it's, it's not in my mind. Even the stuff they do on the magazine source. That's, that's my issue. Yeah, well, I think in the beginning that the argument. Well, there, there is a magazine list. There is a magazine. The magazine it is not a uh, marketing task in general. Uh, if we uh, print the magazine and send it to the magazine. So that's but what it's like that you have uh, in the magazine. Well, I don't know if the, the, the you know provide the data in my way. I mean that was something that I, I kind of feel like the same. I mean I know it's the same thing with like I mean the magazine does have a part. There's time to do. And while it wasn't probably the case in the beginning, so um, um, yes, this is it is Paul now. Ryan, uh, uh, GCP. Right, it's changed since things started. So I, I, I think I don't know, I'm kind of in the same boat because, like, as it, I mean, that it exists already. Like, there is a magazine list, there is a, a magazine fast proof. It's it's all there and in place. So it's be a matter of pointing, updating a few starter or point articles and trying to migrate people from point A to point B. It, it'd still be a pain, I think, but it's, I think, in the long run. I, 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 I feel like marketing is over. Like, there are more uh, users in a magazine than in a Just to prove my friendship request that Much I will send you invite the event yeah. and some more stuff. So, uh, I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat there. Okay, guys, thank you. Yep. Yeah. She is good. Yes. <laughs> no, no. Before everybody leaves, uh, this evening's event, the, uh, the brewery event, you do have to have your badge for it. So make sure you have your badge with you. If you're bringing somebody else that wants to come.